Hello, my name is Dindy Lofton, and I'm a senior limnologist with Stantec based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Today, I'm going to briefly talk to you about internal phosphorus loading. What is it, and how do we manage it? Phosphorus that comes in from the watershed usually enters the lake in dissolved or particulate forms, and this gets processed within the water column through abiotic and biotic components. And what doesn't leave the lake uh, tends to accumulate in the lake sediments where it can be released under certain conditions. And this process is known as internal phosphorus loading. And this is particularly common when the bottom waters go anoxic, phosphorus that was previously bound to iron, uh, that bond is broken, and then the phosphorus is available for release um, in dissolved form from the sediments where it can be taken up by algae. And this can be a really significant source of phosphorus. I won't go through all the compounds on the right, but the takeaway there is that phosphorus is really reactive and forms bonds with a lot of different elements um, and including iron, aluminum, calcium, and it also adheres to clay and organic particles as well. So how do we know if the phosphorus load from the sediments is significant or not, or if it needs to be managed? Well, one of the ways that we do that is to develop a total phosphorus budget. And essentially, this is an accounting exercise of all of the different sources of phosphorus and the loads coming from each of those sources. This pie chart on the left is an example from a lake that we've been managing in Minnesota, Bass Lake, which is in just northwest of Minneapolis. And um, through monitoring and sediment core collection, we determined that um, about 21% of the load is coming from the sediments. Uh, well, that might not seem like a significant source. Um, it also has a TMDL or a total maximum daily load reduction that's been developed for this lake because it is impaired uh, for recreational use due to excessive nutrients. And you can see on the table on the bottom line, internal load, uh, there is a 93% load reduction required by the TMDL. So this internal load needs to be reduced in addition to the continued work that's ongoing in the watershed to reduce loads from the watershed, as well as from the upstream lakes that contribute phosphorus to this lake as well. So how do we manage that load? Well, sediment phosphorus inactivation using alum or aluminum sulfate is one of the most common uh, techniques for reducing internal phosphorus loading in sediments. And this is uh, a technique that was adapted from water treatment practices several decades ago, and therefore it has a long history of use in lakes. We've learned a lot about how to make it most effective and increase the longevity. And alum is applied by a barge on the lake um, that has reservoirs and tanks on the back of the barge and then is injected through hoses, uh, usually sub just below the surface of the water um, through these hoses in dissolved form. And it binds with dissolved phosphorus, uh, making it unavailable for algae. That uh, alum flock settles to the superficial sediments where it integrates into those sediments and is available to capture phosphorus that's diffusing from beneath. It can lower the pH in poorly buffered or soft water, so sometimes a buffer is applied with it to mitigate pH swings. And the longevity of an alum application really depends on the continued extent of the external loads. This figure shows some of the data, additional data from Bass Lake. Um, and this figure shows anoxic phosphorus release rates. Uh, this was taken from sediment cores that were incubated in the lab at UW Stout by Bill James. And you can see that the release rate um, in 2017 was over 10 milligrams per square meter per day. The first half of the alum application was applied in May of 2019. The next year we took follow-up sediment cores and measured a 72% reduction in the phosphorus release rate from the sediments. The second half of the application was applied in September 2020, and we saw an 87% reduction in sediment cores that were collected the following year. So we'll continue to monitor the lake um, and measure the effectiveness of the alum treatment along with the lake's response to continued watershed load reduction efforts. So in summary, there are no silver bullets to managing nutrients in lakes. Usually there's a lot of different sources of phosphorus and um, these all need to be managed to some degree to the extent that resources and capacity allow um, to be able to lower the overall loads uh, to the lake and improve water quality.
alum is a useful tool in the toolbox to reduce the sediment release of phosphorus. And to determine whether or not that's the most appropriate technique, we really need to understand the magnitude of internal and external loads. In some cases, there may be multiple applications needed over time, but the most important part is to adaptively manage the lake's response to all of the implementation actions to measure success and adapt and change course if needed to best use resources to improve water quality. Thank you for your time. Please reach out if you'd like to discuss further. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have.